Hey students, I wanted to jump on real quick and welcome you to uh, to class. And um, perhaps some of you have not actually yet joined the Google uh, Classroom. So I wanna walk you through a couple steps just to make sure you're successful there. So one of the things I did is I created a Um, I created a classroom invite for myself on a private um, Google account. So you'll see I received an email here. You may want to make sure, um, depending on what email service you use, that you're checking the spam folder. Uh, mine didn't actually show up until I hit all mail. When all mail uh, was pressed, then I could see it. Um, and then did it was over in an update tab and I moved it over to my primary tab. So just notice that uh, Google does some things to filter emails. And if it's not there, uh, could be in the spam box. So make sure you check that spam folder as well. So open the email. What you'll get is a message from me or a message from Ronnie that asks you to join. So once you hit join, you can either join with the account um, that the email was sent to and in this case this was the email my private email um, personal email address that uh, that we sent the invite to i can hit switch account if i want and go to another account it doesn't even have to be a gmail account um, but in this case i'm just going to go back and hit join when you join the class it will show me and Ronnie, who both of us are set up um, as instructors, um, it'll show that you've joined the class. And then there'll be a little tutorial, create posts here. Um, this is where you can announce something to the class. Uh, you can post something, a question, introduction. Uh, for example, um, student here, Rita, had put something in. Um, it's a comment. Uh, to one of the the posts I had, or she she first logged in and started her account. She actually just went and introduced herself, which I think is a pretty good practice. Um, this is in stream, so any communication that's coming to you um, from any of the instructors will be in chronological order here. So you could scroll down and kind of see. Let's say you you joined um, after. So today's date is the 7th of March, 2023. If you joined um, today or, or um, earlier today, you would see any posts that, that are um, historically posted here. You would also see um, when new assignments were posted, if you were one of the initial students when we created or released this class. Um, so you don't need to go in and review all of this material. It just shows you every single step of the way in the classroom, um, what was done um, in terms of setting it up and any communications, that sort of thing. Um, your primary uh, place of work is going to be here under classwork. So you can filter uh, topics here. So if you had multiple classes that you were signed up in, let's say ISO 9001, and I saw 14,001 and the, uh, let's say the lead auditor class, I, uh, I saw 19,011. Those would all be listed in here and you would be able to expand or collapse those to show um, the modules that are under each of those three classes. So this is, uh, the, again, the first time you go through kind of a, a little tutorial here, um, pops up and highlights the key areas. So the, the top section here is going to show you all the student manual and course material. So you'll find, um, for example, this one is a, a link to a Dropbox folder that has dozens, if not hundreds, of tools and templates. Um, this is the copyright um, in terms of conditions and using these files. Just note, you know, in short, um, as a student, you're, you're able to access these files most of the files are editable files so you know edit them as as you wish but uh, don't go into a side business selling our products unless we have some sort of agreement in writing to do so pretty self-explanatory um, 
this here is a PDF of the a summary of the clauses. Um, it's four to 10. So check that out. It's better that you actually buy and have a PDF version. ISO 9001 standard or whatever standard the class is aimed at um, versus this version. Um, I highly recommend you do that. Um, but for training purposes, uh, you can use this if you don't have a digital copy of the standard. The um, course manual you'll find is here. So this is just as if you were in, in this case, a three-day class face-to-face. Uh, -face. And if you wanted to do the fourth day, you know, here's the lead auditor, fourth day optional upgrade. But it's really um, meant to take you through the student experience as if you were sitting in a classroom face to face. Um, this would be the physical um, student handbook that you'd receive. So keep that in mind. This will be a companion. You can print it out if you want. You don't have to. You can search um, using the Control F feature um, in your PDF if you'd like to as well. Um, you'll be able to use this document for your final exam. So this is really the heart and soul of the entire course, all compressed into one. So you use that a lot. I would save that off to the side. Keep in mind, it's going to be um, in your Google Class Drive up here as well. So whenever you get lost file-wise, you can always go here and you'll be able to see these are all the files that are pertinent to the class. Okay, now as you go um, and you access these documents, they'll show up here. So you don't really see anything at this point because I'm a new student. So let me go close this and go back to the class drive. Um, this is a very handy tool that um, I actually have printed out in my copy of the standard. Uh, it's, it's filed away at the moment, but um, I have this is the front page of the standard, and I have this is the back page of the standard. It just helps me as a quick reference guide to see where all the clauses are. Um, and in this case, what are the required documents? Where where do they where does the standard require to have something that is documented? And then the color here is where there are requi required records. So just a quick view. Um, this is the same thing. It's the layout of the standard, just in a different format. Um, but I, you will use this frequently throughout the class. Um, you'll hear this called the um, quick reference guide or cheat sheet or whatever um, throughout the training. And finally, this is your instructions. You don't really need this um, right away, but it just shows you the instructions once you complete the class, how you go about registering an exemplar link and you get the, your certificate uh, from exemplar global, how you set up your account, um, validating the account, so on and so forth. So um, that is actually something that we'll cover uh, later on in, in the course, but just know that those key documents are here. Uh, very similarly, the course Videos, you'll see the videos here. Um, this is a consolidation of videos that are linked throughout the rest of the course. This is just, again, kind of a, you know, a locker, so to speak, or sing, single location for uh, the various videos that are in the class. And then resource links, there's going to be a ton of different links that you'll see in the slides, in the modules. This section is, again, a consolidation of the links that you'll see um, throughout the um, various modules. So as far as the first step, just get yourself oriented with the material that's up here that's a, a blanket section for the entire class, and then you'll jump into module one. Um, so for example, exploring student expectations. So this is assigned, there are percentage points, but there's no due date, okay? So the way that you do this is you'll view the question. Here's a, uh, here are all the questions here, but if you go to, to view question and then place your answer here, um, then you can turn it in. So for example, um, you know, if you wanted to be efficient, what you could do 
you could even just copy what the questions are and put your answers after that. There's a couple other questions in here. So if you wanted to just index them that way, but once you're done with your answer, you can hit turn in. So I'm just gonna um, just put uh, sample only. Turn this in. And what happens is um, you can see classmates answers on some of these after you submit. You can also edit your answer after you submit on some of these. Some, uh, some questions are set up where you cannot see classmates answers and you cannot edit your answer after you've submitted it. Um, but in this particular case, you can do both. Um, you can also reply. Um, you can say, oops, I didn't mean to send that or um, hey, one other thought. Um, after reading a classmate's answer, so on and so forth. So let me go to classmate's answers. You can see what other people have placed. You can see what your answer is. You can see any additional class comments or add a general class comment here. You can add a comment um, that's private to Ronnie Bartle. She's the one that set this up. Um, and that would go just to the teacher. Um, so let me go back here. Let's say that you finish this. Um, and you can copy a link and you know send yourself a note or something like that if you need to get you know back into this section after after work or something like that, just as a reminder. Uh, but whenever you get whenever you get kind of to the end of a certain section, you could either do the back arrow or you could come up here, go to classwork, and then go to the next section. So in this section, you can see, um, you know, this is a quick intro of what this is about. This one has a video, so you would watch that video. And then if there are any questions, um, you know, you'd answer the question. Typically, the way that this is set up is if there's a question you need to answer, you'll see a little icon for answering a question. If this is just a topic or um, information or material. I think this icon means material, view material. Um, it's only for viewing purposes. So there's not really an assignment here. So here there is an assignment. Let me collapse this again. So here's a question mark. There are percentage points. There's no due date. Same thing here. So that these icons will help you better understand um, what is expected of you. So you see percent percentage points and a question, um, generally that's an assignment. Sometimes there are sections that are questions um, for a particular module um, section here, but it doesn't give percentage points. It's not really an assignment. It's just a, a, an open discussion. So um, it's not something that we're going to grade, but it is a question that should prompt a, an answer. Um, so keep those in mind. You could see down here in module three, there is a different icon, and this is an assessment. So this is a basically a quiz or a questionnaire that you'd fill out. So let me open that, and I can see, you know, the general um, details here. If I go to view assignment, uh, you can add or create files for your classwork. Now, anything you add or create can be seen by your teacher, but you might want to say. Um, you know, let's say you you add you add this um, or create files because this is something that you want to earmark for a specific use inside your own organization. Um, you can you can use that feature to kind of index um, this particular section for future reference. Okay, and then once you've finished this, you know, if you don't need to add or create files, you can mark your work as done. Again, here's a way to add private comments uh, to the instructor. You can see class comments here. You can add a class comment. There isn't anything here right now. But in this particular case, because this shows as an assignment um, and it shows a Google form, it'll take you actually to um, an assessment. So I'm just going to say, OK, that should require. It doesn't look right. There we go. Okay, so the, the 
assignment here takes you actually to a Google form. This is an example of a Google form. You just type in, in this case, uh, going to put test student. You can see off to the top right, it says draft save. So it's saving this work as you go. So if for some reason, you know, you don't finish um, and you're working on, let's say, a Google form that has a lot of fields, not just the one, um, it is going to save the drafts as you're, um, as you're working. So I hit next and then just, you know, walk through, fill out the form, hit submit, uh, or next and submit at the end. And that assignment uh, will be done. In this particular case, um, again, it shows percentage points, 100 points. So um, basically filling this out uh, will, will suffice and uh, the assignment will be done. So going back over here, um, in you, the first few times, you're in the Google Classroom, you'll get these prompts to kind of show you additional tutorials on um, key buttons and areas and that sort of thing. <clears throat> but if you were to hit join, what would happen there is we would join a Google Classroom um, and you could talk to the other students. The reason why it says camera failed is because I'm actually using Zoom in the background. Um, but that join feature is an easy way for us to meet as a group. It's an easy way for me to meet with you as a student one-on-one, -on -one. Um, but you can also always connect and, and chat with me directly uh, if you need to. Um, any upcoming work, because these classworks um, items don't have specific due dates, um, they won't actually show up here, but if there's some things, you know, I could put something like office hours or something like that showing upcoming. Um, wouldn't really be a task, but it would show up there if I created it as a task. Um, so once again, just kind of work your way down. You can see through some of the links um, that once you go in to it and do uh, the assignment so it shows turned in now it also goes from like a dark gray to a lighter gray and you can keep track uh, of your work that way but I hope that explains it um, the majority for this particular class of the work is going to be reviewing the clauses in the standard so in this case module seven is a review of clause one through four and this is specific clause four, um, you'll go through and read the requirements of clause four, and then there will be um, an audit scenario that you'll have to do. So given this particular scenario here, um, what do you think about the scenario? What concerns do you have? What issues do you have? And again, to view the assignment, here's the full view. Um, but that's the gist, and you can just keep track of your own um, classwork and, you know, hear the people that are your classmates you can reach out to me, um, you can reach out to your classmates, and any new announcements, anything like that will come in over here. Now, one other thing, let me go back here. So if I hit these three buttons, it'll show classes. In this case, I'm only set up to have one uh, be registered as one student. Um, I only have one class. Most of you will only have one class. Some of you um, that are registered for this class actually have two or three other classes that you're taking along with this. So they would be listed here. Um, once you're done with the class, if you wanted to archive it, you would uh, you could do that in a particular setting. Then anything that you have that's a to do would show up here. Anything with a due date in the class stream would show up here. But like I said, um, this is open-ended. There are no due dates for, at least initially, for um, this initial set for this class. So anyway, that's a quick overview. Hopefully 
It's self-explanatory. I will add one more thing, and that is uh, the use of your mobile phone. If you haven't yet, um, download Google Classroom, either at uh, Google Play for Android or iPhone, uh, go to the App Store. It's a really great experience. Um, it's actually, I think, better um, on place than it is a laptop in, in a lot of respects. So check that out. And then if you have any additional questions about this, um, just leave your comments or questions below this video or um, reach out. Uh, you can announce to the whole class what your question is if you want to do that or just the private if you feel more comfortable that way. So good luck. Thanks, guys.